This is John McTiernan's action thriller classic from 1987, and it stars Arnold Schwarzenegger at his very best. Predator has quite a history on the home movie market, and the 4K UHD release is the most recent addition to that history, despite having been available for a few years now. In 1991, Duran Film Services issued the film full length on Super 8 as part of their Fox deal, and those prints were a revelation. I'll be taking a look at the 4K release and also going through the home movie history of this hugely popular film. Predator was a big hit in 1987. It had an estimated budget of $15 million and has taken $98 million at the worldwide box office. It has an aspect ratio of 185 to 1 and runs for an hour and 47 minutes. It was shot on 35mm, but there were apparently some 68mm sequences too. That's a film format I've not come across before, perhaps being confused with 65mm, but presumably it was utilised for some special effects to minimise image degradation when optically combined to be seamlessly inserted into the finished picture. There were 70mm blow-up prints for the top cinemas as well as standard 35mm prints. For those of us who hadn't seen Predator in a cinema, the first opportunity we had to see the film was on VHS tape, and it introduced us to a new type of alien film, quite unlike anything seen before, but evidently taking little inspiration from John Carpenter's The Thing just a few years before, and Ridley Scott's Alien just a few years before that. The film was issued on Laserdisc, but I never purchased a copy on Laserdisc because of that 1991 Super 8 release. I believe this particular print is from the first print run, which is always best owing to the negative being new. They were struck by Buck Film Labs, and with this title and a few others including another Arnie film, Commando, 8mm print quality reached new heights. Predator remains one of the best ever Super 8 prints to this day. There are some minor inevitable Super 8 foibles, such as a bit of movement at times, but this is probably unavoidable from such a small film gauge. Overall though, the quality really did put home movies in a different class for those of us fortunate enough to have a home cinema in those days. The stereo sound on the magnetic stripes was very good too, though not up to the standard of Hi-Fi VHS, but this did mean that with the right equipment we could synchronise the Super 8 print for the best available big screen imagery along with the best available sound from the Hi-Fi VHS. And this would be improved further later on when the DVD was issued, and that had a new 5.1 DTS soundtrack to synchronise to the Super 8 prints. Yes, we could now play at being the Empire Leicester Square in the home. I always used to mask the Super 8 print to give around a 1.66 to 1 aspect ratio, but I'm not really equipped for Super 8 here yet, and so I'm projecting full frame. As a result, some of the Predator heat vision shots do clearly show that there were mats in the camera, but not for every one of those shots. Even then though, the frame ratio is taller than that of the 4K or Blu-ray, so if you do ever see a Super 8 print, you might be seeing parts of Predator you've never actually seen before. The theatrical trailer was also issued on Super 8, and this too looked very good. I used to collect just about all the trailers that were released on Super 8, and made them up into trailer collections on 400 foot and 600 foot reels, along with day sets from the likes of Odeon Cinemas, to give each show a more authentic cinema feeling. A 400 foot reel would run for up to 20 minutes, and a 600 foot for up to half an hour. Those were the days, but I do still run all those reels occasionally today. I never actually watch the DVD, as I have only ever utilised it for the sound for an enhanced Super 8 screening, and that is largely why I didn't feel the need to purchase the 4K UHD Blu-ray when it first came out. Since then, so many subscribers have asked me for my opinion of it, that I finally thought that it might be quite fun to review it, and also to go back and look at the past home movie releases. It has also given me the chance to take a look at the Blu-ray, which is quite notorious for being one of those releases where excessive digital noise reduction was applied. 
It is rather horrible, but I wonder if some younger viewers might actually rather like it. It has that sort of computer cartoon look to it at times, and this makes it look reminiscent of graphics from computer games, so it's possible that some may view it as more authentic looking than the new 4K. I think I understand why this noise reduction was applied though, because whereas film grain on the Super 8 print is barely visible most of the time, it is quite harsh on the 4K disc, so I feel that the scan of this title for Blu-ray exacerbated the grain too much, and due to the opticals to get the opening titles inserted, it was considered to look too coarse to be released owing to those opening sequences. If the noise reduction had been applied more moderately, then it might have worked, but as it is, it's easy to see why it generated such a bad reaction. Clearly a lesson had been learned, but now the film grain might be a little too distracting at times on the 4K disc. Having said that, the overall print quality is pretty good. At times it looks exceptional, but a lot of the time there is too much evident grain for the image to be quite as good as it possibly should be. This may be the result of the scanner that carried out the task in 2018, and perhaps a better machine today will produce a superior result, but it may also be due to the film stock that was used back in 1987, because it's the darker sequences that suffer the most, whereas many of the daylight sequences look fabulous. Another possibility for why some scenes really do stand out for excessive film grain is the possibility of optical zooms. Trevor at Double Bill Movies did say to me recently that he believes he can recall seeing or reading something that did confirm that certain scenes of Predator had undergone this process. It used to be a common practice years ago, so it's quite possible the framing was not considered to be optimal at times, and so optical blow-ups to reframe certain scenes may have been done, and in doing so, the film grain also gets enlarged, thereby causing a coarser look to those scenes than as originally shot. The colour on the 4K is good, and the density is just like watching a film, so overall it's a very good release, despite perhaps not being quite as good as it could be, assuming it is possible to do a better cine-to-video transfer today. It was very nice to see it in here almost 9 feet wide, which gives quite an impact as we're sitting so close to the screen. Any film grain is more obvious in such circumstances, so this may mean that it stands out more to me than it would if I were viewing it on an average television. The DTS sound is good, but it's not up there with the latest soundtracks from films such as The Northman, for example. If you like this film and have been sitting on the fence about getting the 4K, then I think I can recommend it. It's fairly unlikely that a better home video version is going to come along, and I think this is probably as good as it needs to look anyway. I know I've said it before, but I am amazed at the quality that we can get for the home today for such a comparatively small outlay. It's been great fun to look at Predator again after a number of years, and it was good to have an excuse to look at that wonderful Super 8 print again. I've since had an idea for how I might be able to fill the whole screen with a Super 8 print, so I might give that a try soon. It seems that the bigger you go with Super 8, the better it looks, so it would be good to put that theory to the test too. Anyway, the Star Wars 4K has arrived now, so I plan to do a similar review video of that one soon too. The Super 8 feature release of Star Wars was certainly not one of the better quality releases, but it is a scope print, so I have no problem filling the entire width of the screen owing to the anamorphic lens doubling the width of the projected image. Anyway, I think that brings us to the end. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, and perhaps consider subscribing so I'll be encouraged to carry on creating content like this again in the future. Until the next video, bye-bye for now.